All right, so today we're going to talk about everybody's favorite subject. We're going to talk about fractions. So mixed numbers specifically, um, that means it has a whole number and a fraction attached to it. You can kind of see this right here. So basically the biggest thing to remember when you are adding and subtracting fractions is you have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. And a common denominator just means that the denominator, the bottom number, has to be the same. Okay, so we're going to kind of show you what that process looks like, and I think by example is the better way to do that. So we're going we're gonna to start with 3 and 1 third, and this one specifically is adding 5 and 6 elevenths, okay? 3 and 1 third plus 5 and 6 elevenths. So at this point, we do not have common denominators. We have a 3 and we have an 11, and those are not the same. So what I need to do is I need to make them the same, and that means I need to find um, a multiple that they can both actually, that is a common multiple. So that means 3 times something will give me some number, 11 times something will give me the same number. You can use a multiplication chart, or you can just multiply them together. In this case, 3 times 11 is 33, and that's actually going to be what we need to use because that's their least common multiple. So 3 times 11 gives me 33, and that's going to be my common denominator. Okay. So now we have to kind of go through this process to see how we got from 3 to 33. So I did 3 times 11 to get to 33, and whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So times 11 on the bottom, 1 times 11 is 11, okay? Same thing down here. How did I get from 11 to 33? So we're looking at 11 times what gave me 33? 11 times 3 gave me 33. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So 6 times 3 is 18. So at this point, a lot of people kind of like to get rid of this information right here because now we have common denominators. We can kind of get rid of those middle things. Um, I have 11 and I have 18. So what I do, I'm going to add 11 and 18 together. 8 plus 1 is 9. 1 plus 1 is 20. So it looks like I have 29. And I worked really, really hard for that for these denominators to be 33, so it's still going to be 30 thirds. It's definitely not a friendly fraction, but it definitely works. So I am done with that fraction part, and then 5 plus 3 is 8. What I need to check is I need to make sure that my numerator is not larger than my denominator. So 29 is smaller than 33, which works, and that means that our fraction um, is not improper. So our final answer would be 8 and 29 30 thirds. Okay? Again, we didn't have to regroup. We found a common denominator, and we went with that. So this next question, both of those fractions are larger. You can see... 9 tenths and 3 fourths, those guys are closer to being one whole, so we may actually have to do some regrouping on this one, okay? So this time specifically, we've got 2 and 9 tenths and 4 and 3 fourths. So if you'll notice, we do not have a common denominator. We're working with 10 and with 4, and the very first thing that we have to do is find one. So we can kind of go through the multiples here um, of 4. So 4 would work. Um, if 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. None of those are something I can multiply 10 times to get any of those numbers. The next multiple of 4 would be 20. The great thing, I can multiply 10 times 2 to get 20. So it looks like I could use 20 as a common denominator, okay? Again, an option is just to multiply them together. So 10 times 4 would be 40, and I could use 40 right here. I want to use the smallest one possible, so I'm going to use 20 specifically, but you could use 40 absolutely. So let's kind of go back to that situation earlier. We kind of asked ourselves, how did I get from 10 to 20? What did I multiply 10 times what to get to 20? So in this case... Okay, 10 times 2 is 20. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So 9 times 2 is 18. Same thing down here. How did I get from 4 to 20? Well, 4 times 5 gave me 20. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So 3 times 5 
is 15. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and hide our middle part here. Again, we already made our common denominator, so all of that just kind of gets a little overwhelming sometimes. So now I can add 18 and 15. 18 plus 15, 8 plus 5 is going to be 13, and then I get 3 here. So when I add 18 and 15, I get 33, and when I add um, fractions, I never, ever, ever add the denominators. I worked really hard for that denominator to be 20, so it is still going to be 20. Now, I'm going to pause on adding the whole numbers here for just a second, because if you'll notice, this fraction right here is improper. That means the top number is bigger than the bottom number. 33 is bigger than 20. So what we have to do when we have an improper fraction is we have to do some division. So I'm going to come over here to the side, and we call it top in, bottom out, but it's just division. I'm going to see how many times does 20 go into 33, okay? So 20 goes into 33, I think, once and I'm going to see how many are left over. So we've got one whole time with 13 pieces left over out of 20. So how this translates is this one whole right here, that gets carried over here as a whole number. Okay, That means one whole pizza, I got one whole pizza out of that, and that's why I'm carrying it to the whole number side. So what ends up happening is instead of being 33 over 20, we cha we're changing it to um, a fraction that works for us. So we carried our 1 over here. We have 13 left out of the 20. And now we can add our whole number. So 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So this specific answer would be 7 and 13 twentieths. Okay? Again, we just regrouped because our fraction was improper when we added. So this last one is a subtraction problem, so let's take a look at that. Again, I'm sure you can kind of already tell the very first thing that we need to do is find a common denominator. So I want you to think about it for just a second. Um, we have 4 and 6 sevenths and minus 1 and a half. So think for just a second in your head. If you have a 7 and you have a 2, what do you think your denominator is going to be? So our options, we could list the multiples here. So let's list the multiples of 7. We've got 7, and I can't do 2 times something to get 7, so that's not going to work. The next multiple of 7 is 14. Well, I can do 2 times something to get to 14. Okay, so that'll work. Let's use 14. That's going to be the smallest option for us. Okay, again, we're asking ourselves the question, how do we get from 7 to 14? Well, 7 times 2 gave me 14, and whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So 6 times 2 is 12. Okay? 2 times what gave me 14? 2 times 7 gave me 14. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So 1 times 7 is 7. Again, at this point, I can cover up all this stuff in the middle. I have a common denominator, so I don't need any of that anymore. And the great thing is now all I have to do, this is a subtraction question, so all I have to do is take 12 minus 7, okay, and 12 minus 7 is going to be 5. Again, we worked really hard to make our common denominator 14, so it stays 14. We never, ever, ever add or subtract denominators. And then 4 minus 1 is 3. The only thing we need to do is check this little fraction right here, 5 over 14. That is in simplest form, so I don't have to worry about that. So my final answer here would be 3 and 5 fourteenths. Biggest, biggest, biggest thing to remember when you're adding and subtracting fractions is you have to have a common denominator. Got to have a common denominator.